Okay, our first tool I'm going to talk about here is the clear tool. So all you have to do is hit that, and that erases everything. You always undo to bring that back. All your tools in your toolbox are also displayed in the menu bar along with the shortcut keys. And the shortcut keys are can be customized in, pre in preferences. And down here are the shortcuts, and you can edit all of your keys here. And let's go back here. Now, like I said, the clear tool just erases that. You can undo that by hitting Control Z or in the menu bar, go to Edit and Undo. Our next tool is the pencil tool. It's one of three of your drawing tools that you will mainly be using to draw your images. Let's use a darker color. The pencil tool is usually for sketching out your drawings or your animations. So that's it has a different uh, texture to it compared to the other two tools here. Uh, you can adjust your brush size by dragging this up. Let me see that changes there. And you drag that down. Okay. And you can enable or disable your pressure. So this is for your pressure here. Turn that off. You have this. Uh, now, if you're using a mouse, pressure is automatically off, and you don't have that option to enable or disable pressure. Even if you do, even if you do check it, it is still show up with no pressure if you're using a mouse. So uh, I'm currently using a tablet pen tablet for this so uh, that's your pressure uh, down here is stabilizer and right now it has no stabilization on it that's it's just basically smoothing out uh, your strokes basically okay this is none simple and strong And as you saw, it smooths out your strokes as you draw them. Uh, anyway, your next tool is the eraser tool. And it has a little bit more options. Uh, your brush size also has feathering. So let me enable this. Use feather. In order for feather to work, you have to check use feather. So. That's your feathering. And then with lower feathering, does that. And no feathering, just like that. OK. Again, you have your pressure. You can enable it, disable it. Um, anti aliasing. When you turn this off, it's more pixelated. You see that hard cut between uh, the erasing. And that's with most of the tools here. You're going to have anti aliasing. So if I go back to the pencil tool, let's see. Pencil tool doesn't have it, so. Because it's mainly for sketching. Uh, let's go to the pen tool. Now, pen tool has anti aliasing, so. So if I check that on, now if I disable anti-aliasing, you see it's more of a hard pixel type look to it, to your strokes. Uh, this is more useful if you are uh, creating line art and want to bucket fill your colors into the line art. So that would be a lot more helpful because if you try to do anti-aliasing with, let's do this. If we try anti-aliasing with that, do that. You see there's pixels missed in the field. 
But if you do it this way, to alias it off, and then you fill it. Now, usually it'll fill everything in, but it's doing that since I had a faded pencil line that went through that, so that's why those pixels are missed. But yeah, when you're creating line art, uh, if you find it helpful, you can turn off anti aliasing and create your line art and then bucket fill it over to color it. That'd be more efficient that way. Okay, we're on a tangent there talking about anti aliasing, but uh, now we're on our selection tool here. And this is basically to select areas of your drawing. So it's click and drag to create your square. Click the corners to change the size, width, and the height of your selection. And click the middle of it to drag the entire selection. And this selection tool is also uh, paired with the pointer tool here. So you just select the pointing tool here, click and drag the inside, and you see the image is just the selected area of your image is dragged over because the pointed tool is our tool for now here. Uh, in this corner here, we we'll change the size of your image. Height, width, and size there. Now you have to be very careful with using the selection tool and pointing tool because once you confirm your image, uh, let's see. If I bring this down and then select it out, then if I say, oh, wait a minute, let me size it back up, and then you try to size it back up, it's going to change the resolution of your image. And you're not able to get the same quality of line as you did before. See that? That's the difference. So just be extremely careful with using the selection tool and pointer tool. That's only if you're uh, if you care about the quality of the line work. If it's just a rough animation phase and stuff, then you can um, move your uh, selections and size them up any way you want without really worrying without really worrying about the quality of your lines because it's going to be cleaned up and inked up on another layer anyway. So. Of uh, our next tool is the pen tool, and it's basically the same as the brush tool and pencil tool. You got your anti aliasing, you got your, uh, your pressure, your anti aliasing, your stabilizer. So it's pretty much the same as the others. But that's basically what the pen tool is. Hitting the space bar would bring up the hand tool, as you've been seeing me move. The canvas around this whole time and holding down control while dragging with the hand tool it causes the zoom in and out holding down alt while dragging will cause it to rotate you can reset your zoom and rotate and that's a shortcut key for that that is customizable in preferences now for your polyline tool just simply click and that creates a line, click again to create another line. And then you double click to confirm. And there's no way to cancel out of the polyline tool once you create one. So you just have to confirm it and then uh, I believe undo to take that away. Yeah. Now your next tool is the bucket fill tool, which I've talked about earlier. So it basically just colors your entire canvas here and your level of tolerance can be adjusted so as you see as you lower or uh, bump up the tolerance 
it's uh, the lower the number, the less it will cover, and the higher the number, the more area it will cover with the bucket field tool. So that's basically what that is. If you're using a bucket field tool, you have to color on the exact same layer as your inking layer. Now you do have the option with the brush tool to uh, hand paint your stuff manually. So let me create another layer here. And go to brush. Pump it up some. Now, as you can see, the eye is covered up by the paint and it's not supposed to do that. So what you will have to do, drag this layer beneath the line art layer and uh, there you go. So you can color it that way or you can bucket fill your clean line art on the same layer. So you have that option. Okay, delete. And now you have your pointer tool. But I, let me talk about the eyedropper tool first here. Uh, eyedropper tool, you uh, either can select it and pick your color, or you can just be on the brush tool and you hold Alt to enter in the eyedropper uh, feature here. And then you just click while holding the Alt tool and then when you're done with it, you let go, and it brings you back to the drawing tool you were previously. So that's pretty handy. Uh, your smudge tool is basically just to smudge your lines up here. So let me pick the area. Uh, we go to our smudge tool. And they have their uh, smudge tool has its options. This is size tool, feather tool, anti-aliasing. Uh, now let's try it again. And this is this could be mainly used for uh, I say painting backgrounds or creating some kind of effect with smudging. And that's basically all of your tools as far as the bitmap layer is concerned. That's how all your tools work on the bitmap layer. So let me go to the vector layer here. And we have a pin here, so let's do that. Now, the pointer tool in, vector, in the vector layer basically moves your lines around. So it makes this and you just move that around then you can size it up size it down it's a bit glitchy on the vector layer so it still has a few bugs but you can still play around with it in the vector layer the smudge tool turns into uh, a line editing tool so just select your smudge tool click on the line and you see all these points that come up so you can drag these points and that's basically that and I also forgot to mention that in the polyline tool this is experimental but there is an option of the Bezier curve so let's try that for a moment here Okay, yeah, it's bugging out for me. I'm in a vector layer, that's why it's doing it. So let me get out of here. Okay. Let me get that off of there. All right. So let's try this again. Bitmap layer, polyline tool, Bezier curve. Bump down the size a bit. All right. So go there, click and drag click and drag as you click and drag it's creating curves
and that's basically what it is there. This is also a spear metal, so feel free to play around with it. But it basically makes curves as you draw your polylines. So that's basically everything for the as far as the toolbox panel. Uh, I will be working on another tutorial about how to use the display margins for your camera. So that will become my next tutorial. And this is DJS100 signing out. Thanks for watching.